good afternoon. My name is Sally Burkery and I'm the Managing Director of CWUK, the largest global professional organisation for the beauty industry. Over the past couple of months, we've been running a series of webinars where we've looked at a variety of topics, including influencer marketing, how beauty brands can use Pinterest, the power of heritage print brands, and we've heard valuable global insights from our partners at Mintel. Today, we're delighted to welcome Georgie, Seema and Clarissa from industry experts, ACAST, to help us take a look at the power of podcasts and how brands can use them really effectively at the heart of their communication strategies. Without further ado, I'll hand over to Georgie. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Sally. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, welcome to our virtual Sound Smart event, the beauty of podcasting with the CEW. Um, I'm Seema Amin, I'm a key account director at ACAST and we wanted to speak to you about why podcasts should be at the heart of the conversation. With over 10 million people listening to podcasts weekly, Georgie Holt, our managing director, will shine the light on leading audio influencers and how you can connect with them to reach your dedicated listeners. And Clarissa Pabby, our content development manager, will be speaking to Liv Little, founder of Galdem and host of the Growing Up With Galdem podcast, and Ione Gamble, founding editor-in-chief of Polyester Zine, highlighting how launching an original branded podcast can help your brand own the conversation. So let's dive right in. For those who don't know, ACAST is the world's biggest podcast company and the engine powering creators, advertisers and listeners everywhere. Our team of more than 200 audio lovers are creating a sustainable and open podcast ecosystem, ensuring the whole industry continues to grow and flourish. We have sales teams on the ground in 13 markets around the world, including the UK, of course, Sweden, America, Mexico, Australia, France and Germany. Our services are the most sophisticated available and are constantly being updated with innovative new tools and functionality. Our mission is to seek out and support the storytellers, giving their stories the audience they deserve. And our promise is that through ACAST, more stories find more listeners, nurturing a fair, profitable and thriving podcast ecosystem. ACAST is truly unique in that it has ACAST Intelligence, ACAST Creative and ACAST Automated powering your solutions, through which we're able to give advertisers both direct and automated access to the world's best podcasts, the most talented creators and the most engaged listeners across any and every podcast platform. Our commercial services are what sets us apart from our competition. All of our market leading insights and data, including our ad tech tools, is powered by ACAST Intelligence. Our ACAST creative team, run by branded content experts, designed bespoke, market defining, innovative audio campaigns with brands, agencies, and our talented podcaster network, through which we're able to build brilliant brand stories. And ACAST Automated is our programmatic arm, the perfect reach driver for your beauty campaigns. They're dynamically inserted into your desired shows and contextual categories and are heard across all leading podcast platforms, including Apple and Spotify. Our content is at the heart of everything we do, and we have a portfolio of unique services that put our podcasters first. So whether that's joining ACAST Open, our platform for emerging podcasts of any size to use our world-class tools, the ACAST Creator Network to supersize both listenership and revenue, or ACAS, our educational arm, which includes masterclasses and practical advice for underrepresented voices in podcasting. Our unparalleled services put our talent front and center. And through this, we're able to bring the most innovative influence opportunities to both advertisers and creators across a multitude of platforms. So why podcasts? Well, if we have a look at the last normal week before lockdown, we can see that the beauty industry makes up just 2% of the podcast market, which leaves it a completely untapped resource. And in a time when advertisers are battling through highly cluttered environments to be heard, the low density ad volume of the podcast market offers beauty brands to cut through they've been looking for. Over the next couple of slides, I'll be taking you through why podcasts should be at the heart of the beauty conversation. So to provide more context, I wanted to begin by delving into the history of podcasting. The first feed was syndicated back in 2003, and the term podcast was actually coined by The Guardian the following year. Apple then went on to release their own standalone podcast app in 2012, and soon after we saw the birth of Serial, which became a global success. In the same year, ACOS was born and launched the first advertising model around podcasts. Daily Podcast was soon released in response to our 24-7 society and ACAST went on to introduce ACAST Open last year. 
The podcast market is currently thriving with reach and revenue continuing to grow and is yet to show signs of slowing down. The IAB estimates that global advertising will exceed $1 billion by the end of 2020. And we've hit record listens across the ACAST network, both globally and in the UK. And with more people listening to shows whilst they stay at home, smart brands are investing in podcasting to reach immersed audiences at a larger scale than ever before. As you can see, there's been a steady rise over the last five years with podcasts now reaching 18% of the UK population. This is no doubt down to the rich catalogue of evergreen content catering to every need, from world news to podcasts solely about eating crisps. Through dynamic injection technology, advertisers are easily able to access this fast growing audience. And one of the key factors that has led to this is that podcasts are now more accessible than ever before, and they're expanding into new areas and reaching new audiences. ACOS is in a truly unique position being platform agnostic. Podcasts are now available on every iPhone and Android handset, as well as on smart speakers. And as we see a high infiltration of smart speakers entering the home, we'll also notice different ways in which audiences consume podcasts. So we're expecting to see an increase in group listening and more formats will be released capitalizing on the different times of day audiences are consuming content, making messaging even more engaging. With podcasting being one of the fastest growing media platforms, we understand how important it is to have meaningful data and insights. ACAST Intelligence is our service providing advertisers the most insightful data. So whether that's powered by data, artificial intelligence or machine learnings. And according to Midas' Spring 2020 report delivered last month, 11.3 million people in the UK now listen to podcasts each and every week. And we often refer to the podcast market as the fastest growing medium in the UK. And to put this latest figure into context, there is no less than a 29% increase in unique listeners year on year. We also know that not only are more people listening than ever, but they're also listening for longer than ever before, with the average person consuming seven hours of podcast content each week, a significant consumer-led commitment to any medium. When we drill down to the demographic profile of the UK podcast audience, we see that the gender split remains largely even. This result is undoubtedly driven by the wealth of diverse and quality content that is being released on a weekly and at times daily basis. Another thing to note is the broadening of reach by age brackets. Long gone are the days when podcasts were only good for reaching a core 25 to 34 millennial male audience. And we've seen an influx of Gen Z listeners who are keen to hear from beauty influencers and those perhaps seem slightly later adopters in the 45 plus audiences. As you can see, we're experiencing growth across every segment from the generation Zs all the way to the baby boomers which in turn is expanding the audience you're able to access. And that being said, the value of this audience remains the same. The podcast listener tends to be affluent, educated, influential, and far more likely to become an early brand adopter, keen to act on brand messaging. And this is ideal in the beauty category, which is primarily driven by trends and new product developments. One of the main reasons for this is that podcasts are a high trust medium with a relationship between their hosts and their engaged community of listeners. And this is a result of years of organic growth. Podcasts are the only medium through which an intimate one-to-one -one relationship can be formed between the host and listener. With 76% of podcast listening taking place on headphones, listeners are completely engaged and have actively chosen to listen to the content. This relationship is able to be leveraged when it comes to speaking about specific products with over three quarters of podcast listening um, acting on brand message within a podcast. Looking specifically at the beauty audience within the podcast industry, we can see that female podcast listeners are three times more likely to follow cosmetic influencers to know about the latest cosmetic trends. And they're 50% more likely to try new cosmetic products or brands if they are recommended. And this audience is also 55% more likely to prefer advice on cosmetic products from people they know to that of experts or editors. And this is further amplified by our listeners who are hugely influential themselves, with 61% of them claiming friends seek their advice on new products and services, as the majority of them are keen on upskilling themselves and seeking out new information. Influencers are very intuitive and are an important part of the podcast ecosystem, wanting to be as authentic as possible with their social following. And when considering how people are listening to their favourite podcast content, this is still heavily driven by mobile consumption, which plays to the requirements of an on-demand medium. 
They prefer to harness the increased streaming capabilities of mobile tariff and Wi-Fi providers, salvaging memory space across their own devices. And nine times out of 10, as I mentioned earlier, they'll be listening to their favorite content in a captivating environment uniquely delivered by headphones. Finally, when looking at the current state of the consumption ecosystem, the UK is still dominated by Apple Podcasts, who were recently credited with having over a million podcasts readily available for podcast-hungry audiences. Now, with all that being said, it's safe to say that the recent pandemic has had an undeniable effect on the media industry as a whole, and we have seen entire sectors of the industry severely impacted with regards to both audience consumption and advertising spends. However, when we consider the state of the podcast industry across the pandemic period to date, the results are incredibly promising. Primarily, we saw a slight dip in listing figures across Monday to Friday, week commencing the 16th of March. This was when the UK government advised that businesses capable of doing so should work from home. An understandable pause in your average consumer's habitual consumption patterns as they look to organise and assess their new work routine. However, it is the consumption pattern seen from week commencing 23rd of March, the week in which the UK first went into lockdown, that the true effect on the podcast industry can be seen. One of the most notable highlights was delivered by our podcasters, as our content creators were able to take real advantage of the agile nature of podcast production, and we saw a trend against the curve. Last week saw a record of 3,616 episodes released in a single week. Our talent has been incredibly resilient and have kept on creating content, if not more, during the pandemic. And this increase in content output was matched by an unquestionable thirst for podcast content amongst consumers. Evidence of this can be seen in the fact that March, <clears throat> excuse me, um, March saw the term podcast being searched for more times than ever before, according to Google search data. Both this increase in content production and an evident hunger for podcasts amongst consumers has undeniably helped to drive a remarkable 20% increase in listenership of ACAST content since the rise of the pandemic. And I'm absolutely thrilled to report that the pinnacle of this growth to date has seen the delivery of an all-time record, 11.3 million listens to ACAS content in the last four weeks alone. Interestingly, we have also seen changes to the times of day at which the UK audience is consuming podcasts. Traditionally, we see spikes in listening in the morning and the evening, as many people throw a podcast on as a way to start or uh, to wind down at the end of it. We're all creatures of habit and by capitalizing on the complementary nature of podcasting by tapping into our audience's day and night routines, beauty brands could carve out a real niche for themselves. However, if we look at people's consumption habits for the last four weeks, what we have seen is people listening for more sustained periods throughout the day. This paired with the increase in listenership clearly illustrates that although people's daily routines have been subject to change, their love for podcasts remains unconditional. You can see here that the curve has begun to flatten and traditional commuting times no longer experience peaks. We have been tracking our content categories in order to deliver a view on the types of content trends we have seen during this pandemic. And we've seen audiences flock to our comedy content whilst they seek a form of comedic escapism. Another popular vertical since the outbreak of the pandemic was our educational content. Many people have used lockdown as an opportunity to upskill themselves. So whether that's learning a new language or brushing up on general knowledge, no doubt to take glory on that Friday night Zoom quiz. Others of note include increases in listens in food and drink, lifestyle and health content, all understandably driven by consumers wanting to feel healthier and experiment. So whether that's in the kitchen with a chocolate banana bread or with the latest beauty looks giving a stained glossy lip ago. Naturally, as expected, news and politics is an incredibly popular vertical, with so many top premium publishers still releasing quality and informative content during the pandemic. And finally, we saw listens to our sport content drop by 13% after the postponement of the Premier League was announced. However, what can be seen is a resilience and agility from our sport content creators in their ability to continue releasing content that feels current and lands with their audiences. This, as you can see, has led to only a 3% decrease in listeners to sport content across the pandemic as listeners return to the category. So that concludes this section on who we are and our audience insights. I hope you found the last 10 minutes interesting and useful. I'll now pass over to our managing director, Georgie Holt, who will take you through how ACAST is home to the best audio beauty influencers.
Hi everyone, hope you can hear me. Um, thank you so much, Seema. As she said, I'm Georgie, the UK and Ireland MD, um, and a big welcome from me to everyone who has joined us for this SoundSmart event with the CEW. Acast is the global and UK market leader in podcast content. Acast podcasts have over 43 million collective UK listens, and we work with some of the world's biggest and most important publishers, as well as a roster of exceptional talent and influencers. We are the global home for publishers in podcasting, working with some of the biggest and most important names from the world's most trusted news organizations to the most influential and iconic lifestyle brands. To give you a sense of the scale we have, if you look at the top five logos from The Guardian across to the Times on this slide, those publishers combined provide nearly 1,000 podcasts alone. Alongside our publishers, ACAST's incredible podcast talent and influencers create a hugely diverse range of podcast content that reaches highly engaged and immersed audiences at scale. Looking at this slide, we just see just a tiny glimpse of all the talented, independent audio influencers and broadcasters who make podcasting so special and varied. Whether it's the multi-award winning grief cast, Jesse Ware's runaway smash hit Table Manners, the much adored and ever popular The High Low with Dolly Alderton and Pandora Sykes, to Catherine Ryan's new chart topping show, Telling Everybody Everything, and the newly launched shows from the likes of the Galdem team with their podcast, Growing Up with Galdem. Our talent provides something for every listener and every brand, and working with us offers a unique opportunity to integrate a brand's marketing message into this trusted and genuine influencer space. Our podcaster's popularity is unrivaled and they regularly dominate the top 10 trending charts on iTunes. I'm sure you'll recognize and may well be listening to quite a few of the ACAST names on here with the likes of Adam Buxton, My Dad Wrote a Porno and Shag Married Annoyed. So far, you've heard from Seema about the origins of podcasting, the demographics and behaviors of our audiences, their interests in beauty and the content and listener trends that are shaping our space. I've briefly talked about who we work with and now it's time to talk about how you work with our podcasters and our publishers. Acast Marketplace is the home of podcast buying globally and has three distinct opportunities, ads, sponsorship and branded content. Before I dive into those in more detail, I just wanted to talk about how Acast and podcast advertising works. Well, the easiest way to think about podcast advertising is to actually compare it to TV. Let's take Boxel, who are now sponsors of drama on Channel 4. Channel 4 hold the exclusive rights to broadcast shows like The Handmaid's Tale in the UK. And that show will also be available to view across other platforms such as Sky, Virgin and Freeview, and so will the sponsors' messaging. Podcasts work much in the same way. Let's say Clinique approaches Acast to buy a millennial audience, we would discuss sponsoring a show like Table Manners with Jessie Ware. Even though the show is being hosted by Acast, the sponsorship would be available to hear across all your favorite podcast platforms. That includes iTunes, Spotify, our own platform, Stitcher, and many, many others. So back to ads. Ads are typically 30 second long commercial messages dynamically inserted into show content, giving advertisers the opportunity to harness the power of contextual advertising. We can ensure the brand is within relevant content or only heard at a key time of day or in a specific location and by the right audience. There is even more innovation on the way in this space with keyword targeting on the horizon. We're completely transparent and clients are able to opt out of shows they don't want to run in. We are the only podcast company certified against all four of the IAB's compliance metrics setting the bar for the industry. As I mentioned just a few slides ago, ACAST works with some of the UK's leading talent, delivering an audio influencer network of powerful and recognisable voices for the beauty and grooming industry. Over the next couple of slides, I will outline some of the ways you can work with them and amplify your future campaigns. Sponsorships first. This is the OG of podcast advertising. Typically around one minute long, these sponsorships are powerful talent and influencer endorsements created by the host for your brand and delivered in your own unique style. This approach creates authentic brand messaging that is trusted by their audiences and in turn delivers proven results. The research you heard earlier showed that 76% of podcast listeners take action as a result of host reads and sponsorship can be turned around very quickly and unlike the rest of the influence the marketing industry remains very much unimpeded by the current situation we find ourselves in. High quality host reads are being produced daily by our podcasters. 
Sponsorship reads can be anywhere between 30 and 90 seconds, which allows for really genuine and relatable storytelling. And here is a great example of one from the High Low with Dolly Alderton and Pandora Sykes for John Frieda. Support for the High Low comes from John Frieda. Transform your hair with John Frieda, whatever your hair challenge. Taming frizz, brightening blonde, or the endless quest to make fine hair full. I know that quest well. You and me both, sister. Both Pandora and I are intimately associated with bad hair days. I have a fringe which is more maintenance than a fleet of cavapoos. And I have naturally frizzy fine hair, which is why I tend to wear mine in a bob. That said, it's incredibly hard to find a product that can tame fine hair without leaving it looking like you have three greasy strands on your head like my toddler at the end of her tea time. <laughs> I have been using frizzies since I was a teenager and I stole some from my curly haired older sister. And truly, it's the only serum that works for me. And now, what larks? Such joys! There is a new range, Frizzies Weightless Wonder, which achieves sleek but non-greasy hair even more effectively. The new Weightless Wonder range includes a lightweight frizz fighting shampoo, conditioner and cream to instantly tame fine frizzy hair without weighing it down. While Pandora is a slave to her frizzies, I am beholden to the Go Blonder for blondes that want to go blonder and add strength. The Go Blonder range gently lightens hair by two shades, just in time for the summer, and the new Lemon Miracle Mask strengthens and protects against future damage. There's also a detox and repair range infused with avocado oil and with possibly the most tastefully designed shampoo and conditioner bottles I've ever seen. Dark green bottles with a lovely illustration of an avocado on them. Thank you very much to John Frieda. As you can hear, they took full advantage of that 90 seconds and the messaging is authentic and personal. To further deepen the relationship with talent and influencer podcasts, branded content collaborations enable advertisers to co-create longer form content with our podcasters, allowing them to tap into the show's established audiences from branded segments, episodes of virtual and live activations and social media amplification. This 360 approach offers a unique opportunity for advertisers to benefit from even deeper talent endorsements with a multi-channel approach. The final level, so to speak, on the branded content journey within the podcast space is to become a creator in your own right. As we've seen across many other mediums, more and more brands, including those within beauty, are wanting to become content creators themselves and are now seeing podcasts as a great way to achieve this. At Acast, we are able to make completely bespoke podcast series for brands, and this is a highly effective when brands have an amazing story to tell and a large amount of content to get across. Should this feel like the right approach for you, ACAST are on hand to help through the entire process, from idea generation to producing, promoting, and distributing this content. We have seen more and more brands enter the original branded content space, with particular uptake and interest from those shows who find themselves within a premium and luxury, luxury sector. A great example of this is Bell Staff's original series, A Road Less Travelled, hosted by Reggie Yates, which celebrated the characters that took the unfamiliar roads in life with guests including Stanley Tucci and Naomi Harris. With more and more creative formats and audio experiences being developed in podcasting, the original branded content opportunity offers brands so much scope and innovation. I'm sure this will be an area that we see more and more beauty and fragrance brands leading the agenda. Personally, I love the thought of beauty tutorials transitioning from video and social platforms to audio. I think this is an interesting, immersive and untapped space to explore for brands. We have plenty of examples of original branded content, and here's just a selection of brands who have worked with us in this way. NatWest, Bellstaff, Porsche, and Land Rover. NatWest are now on their sixth series with us, their podcast series focuses on women in business. Porsche wanted to use incredible women to tell stories that inspired through the clothing that shaped their lives. Land Rover used 3D sound, creating a podcast aimed at families, which was recording on location in immersive binaural sound at some of the UK's most fascinating places. All of the opportunities and services I've mentioned come with a responsibility. We must ensure podcasting remains a place where listeners enjoy their experience and that commercial messages are of the highest possible standard. Therefore, ACOS Creative is a service we provide to help advertisers understand the space and develop the best possible creative route to achieve your brand's objectives, whether that's ads, sponsorship or branded content. And here are some of the brands we've worked with at ACAST Creative, from John Lewis, Microsoft, and Mercedes, to name just a few. 
That is it from me for now. Our panel session hosted by Clarissa, our brilliant content development manager, which features two of our independent podcast creators, Liv Little, CEO and founder of Galdem, an award-winning media company committed to sharing the perspectives from women and non-binary people of color. Liv is also the co-host of the fantastic new Growing Up With Galdem podcast. She is alongside the incredible Ione Gamble, founding editor-in-chief of Polyesterzine, a self-published intersectional feminist fashion and culture publication and a celebration of all things trash, kitsch and camp. Ione is also the co-host of the wickedly brilliant Polyester podcast. I personally wanted to say a huge thank you to both Ione and Liv for finding the time and headspace to still speak to us this week. All of our independent creators have the autonomy and ability to decide how and when they work with brands. And I really hope you enjoy this powerful, insightful and genuine conversation. It is pre-recorded and is also now running through Zoom. So there may be a slight delay with the audio and visual, but do enjoy it. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you both so much um, for joining us here today um and i also i guess kind of want to start by like giving you your flowers in 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 one respect and i kind of want to first off start off by saying that with a kind of reach of over 300,000 followers collectively on social media uh galdem and polyester are undoubtedly two of the most creative uh, fastest growing and culturally relevant publishers to emerge over the last few years we're huge admirers of your work and your ability to genuinely amplify different voices and allow more people to be seen and heard. And I personally think you do this in what I would call um, an effortlessly inclusive way and in a really interesting and thoughtful way. And I think that sort of approach is um, more important today, perhaps, than it's ever been. And podcasting is obviously, obviously such a powerful medium. We're really excited to see you both extend your platforms through the polyester podcast and through growing up with Galdem and it's just been a joy to work with you both and your team so I kind of first off just wanted to start off by saying that um oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I think maybe let's start with your audiences because I think sometimes we we want to focus on the content yeah so focus on platforms but I'm actually really interested to hear about your audiences so who is kind of the Galdem woman or the Galdem person who is, you know, person, definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're super young. I'm not super young. They're kind of between the ages of, you know, 25 to 35. They're really, really engaged. They're political. They know what's happening in the world. Um, we do also have like quite a lot of insight, not quite a lot, but we've got like a little bit of insight in terms of um, our audience and, and like how they engage with beauty as well, which I'm sure we can get into later. Um, but yeah, they, 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 they're looking for representation that they that they haven't seen anywhere else and you know they're not afraid to call out injustice when they see it they're not af afraid to call bullshit on things when they see it um and I and I reckon the kind of polyester audience is is quite similar you know they are we're existing we're taking up space and I think you know for a lot of us platforms like ourselves these these are spaces that that didn't exist and so we had to carve out and so yeah our audience are you know, completely, completely engaged and, and a lot more engaged um, than you get with other platforms and publishers, um, even though the reach might sound, you know, smaller than some of the mainstream kind of um, publications, what you actually get is like a super, super, super engaged um, reader, like the Galdem reader, the, the, the kind of archetypal Galdem fan or person is, um, is incredibly, incredibly engaged. Yeah, polyester. Oh you talk about yeah your audience and and who's the person that you're kind of talking to i'd say it's like extremely similar to what liv said so mainly like 18 to 35 year olds women and queer people and non-binary people especially our audience is split like largely between the uk and the us but also in europe a bit as well in Australia but it's really similar like we're talking to people that kind of have never seen themselves represented in the media or don't feel like the media that they're reading is really catering to them in a way that is joyful as well that they can actually enjoy that isn't kind of like click baiting their experience or is so obviously trying to sell to them for example like it's so important for us to build an actual authentic community and that's what our audience really feels is important as well so it's like always a conversation and it's the same thing Liv said, like extremely tuned in, even though it might not be like the typical reach 
that much larger publications will have we have this like relationship with our audience and our followers and our fans that is built on like trust and built on that we are always trying to like make the content that needs to exist in the world for them i suppose mm. like yeah, yeah i'd say it's really yeah. similar trust is so important i i think trust is so important as well it's like whenever we kind of enter into a brand partnership a campaign be that long term short term whatever we have such a responsibility to to respect and reflect our audience and so we're very choosy about who we who we will and won't work with and i know that irony and polyester will be exactly the same um yeah amazing and i think i think it's really interesting actually to look at the crossover then at the kind of podcast audiences because just hearing mm. you both kind of talk about the kind of main platform we see that kind of reflected in 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 podcasting and i guess that leads on to my next question which is i guess both of you have created really you know really kind of visually arresting um bold kind of brands and platforms um for your audiences um yeah that have you know really revolved around visuals and um you know written work as well and so i guess the question is why podcasting why did you want to kind of make podcasting a focus um for you guys at this moment i think i was listening to a lot of podcasts at the time we decided to go into podcasting and kind of at the same time because i know it's the same for galden we only do print like once a year now so that's like a very it's not very regular and polyester decided to pause online publishing because we couldn't really like keep up with the bigger um publications and we thought we weren't really outputting we weren't really making the progress we wanted to in the online space, but we were still having all these really great conversations, especially on set, like at shoots, because we never use agency models. We always cast from our followers and our audience. And we're mm -hmm. having all these really great conversations while we were talking on set at shoots, but also like within our contributors circle that felt like they should have sort of like a more permanent home or somewhere that brought in that audience a lot more. And it was kind of a way that we can keep in touch with people over this time, like between print and another way just to kind of cement that community and get people more heavily involved with what we do. And it kind of felt that like the podcasting world hadn't been super explored, especially in the UK by a platform like Polyester, like one that was catering to like queer people, non-binary people, like a more inclusive platform. I was kind of feeling a bit not catered for in terms of like the range of feminist stuff that's going on so we kind of thought well let's give it a go then mm -mm -mm. and it's a beautiful podcast and it does it does so well in terms of like bringing in that varying perspective of of the voices of your audience which i think is a really beautiful thing oh thanks um, mate so yeah smashing it obviously <laughs> i'm a fan um <laughs> very much likewise <laughs> <laughs> um for for us um for us I think audio was always something that we that we wanted to to kind of to to get involved with and it had to feel like it was the right project and at the right time to launch our kind of journey into the podcasting world and we had a book that came out last year um a YA book that we published with um with Walker and the premise of the book was essentially that we were all speaking to not speaking to it wasn't like you know one of those there were quite a lot of those kind of advicey things where it's can tend to be quite condescending but the point of this of this collection of essays um was that we were direct directly responding to things that we had written when we were like in our teens um and it was and it and it was a beautiful experience and so for us it made perfect sense to kind of translate that um into into the podcasting space it kind of naturally lent lent itself to a really beautiful um and simple and moving format and like you say a, a way to connect with our with our audience um in a way that we don't necessarily get to all the time so i mean in terms of our guests as well because you know the majority of people that we've had on this show so far be that michaela cole be that monroe they're all people who we've had these really long kind of relationships with which like gives it a sense of intimacy that is incredible and and you know we, we definitely have plans to kind of expand in our in our podcast offering but this is where we've started and i think for me personally i just i love i love audio i think it's such a kind of beautiful and, and intelligent way to tell stories that really gets you to think and build up a picture um, in your own mind in a way that other kind of mediums don't necessarily do. So I think um, it, it, it's exciting. And, and the other thing is that we work with a lot of young people and they always tell us, you know, not that we're old, but they always tell us what we should be doing. <laughs> and podcasting 
was a definite thing that we should be doing. I remember we had, um, we were interviewing, we interviewed hundreds or had applicants from hundreds of people for a couple of kind of um, paid intern roles that we had last year. And like 99% of them told us that we need, we needed to have a show. So we had to listen, especially because the kind of format of that book was, was intended to reach a slightly younger audience um, in the beginning. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's so exciting and there's so much space within kind of podcasting, obviously media in general, but specifically in podcasting to hear from voices that you don't necessarily hear from. So for us, it's kind of a natural extension of what we do, which is about kind of platforming and creating a space for these voices to be heard. And, and the first podcast that you see is, yeah, it's me and Charlie speaking, you know, as people that work with at for Galdem. Um, but you know, our next podcasts, it could be that we start, we receive pitches from, from our, from our, from other people, just as we do with video and, and, um, and editorial. So I think it's, it's, yeah, it's just super exciting. Really, really exciting. I love that. I think like both of what you're saying about, I, I think you've, you've almost touched on like also how there's almost like something inherently inclusive about audio to like some degree in the way that. It, there, there isn't in, in, in other forms of platforms and yeah um that was really really interesting um I, I i had a question actually around i guess linked to kind of what you've kind of been talking about i guess community right like how how you how you use social media really to not only kind of create or engage with community but also to reflect it and i wondered um what you think particularly kind of beauty brands can learn from the work you've done because i think you both have got a really interesting blueprint as, as to how you've kind of done that in building and reflecting and and platforming communities that have kind of always existed but would yeah love to kind of hear your, your thoughts on that um mm -hmm. let's start off with ioni I think it's really important, especially when it comes to brands trying to be inclusive or bring communities in to not like retroactively fit, try and fit in, trying to fit those communities into your product, in my opinion, will always seem like slightly inauthentic, which is where the beauty can come from working with like Galdem or Polyester, because we have like always been there for these communities and will always have like a community first approach to these things. Um, I think that is something that beauty brands can really look at and I think that they can also just push things like further and further out for example some of the like best performing content on polyester we've ever done has been like beauty shoots with women that have double chins because despite the fact that we have like marginal diversity within beauty campaigns or like mental health awareness and all these things there are still intersections of identity that are completely ignored by the beauty industry like fatness disability largely like trans people and non-binary people and it's really about like not just paying lip service to these people it's what Liv said about trust like trust takes a lot to build and it's like very easy to break down that trust too so if brands are looking to build up trust with these communities it makes like total sense to go to people that have already been doing that work for a long time yeah I think I think like everything that you've said is absolutely spot on and 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 everything that I would echo to be honest I think like you said um you know we, we've kind of spent time really really carefully working with nurturing cultivating the audiences in the communities that we do have and that's not something that can happen overnight it's not and it and it's you know there needs to be a kind of a longer term commitment shown you know when you see a brand like l'oreal paris posting um that they stand in solidarity with black lives matter and and not too long ago dropped a black trans woman from from their campaign for speaking out about um white privilege and and you know it's 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 laughable and it's and it's ridiculous and it's and it's disingenuous and and people can see that if you if you log into their instagram and look under that post everyone's livid you know you can't you can't you know by one hand say we don't care about you and 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 to look good for for a social post or for like a momentary campaign pretend pretend that you care you know it's it's completely transparent and so yeah you have to you have to spend time and you have to work with you know the people that know those communities well you know um you you need you need to you need to have diversity of all all sorts you know behind behind closed doors you know not just not just on screen and and you know as i only said yeah it's not enough to see that you've included x face in 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 a campaign 
because it, it, it doesn't really mean anything what is the what is the commitment is that a one-off thing is that a thing that is going to happen every time you have a campaign are, are people going to be represented are you going to work with publishers and platforms who are actively doing the work and supporting those communities um and have been doing for some time what are you going to do you know what are you going to do um so yeah you know obviously it's just a very intense time right now um but yeah you know it it, it can't it can't be performative. None of us are here for, for performative actions and, and that's not how you build audiences. I think there are some brands that have, that have been really clever, some beauty brands that have been really clever in the ways that they, that they have built their campaigns out um, and they have used their audiences uh, uh, you know, as, as, as the people that you see, like brands like Glossier and like there, there, are, there are places and, and people who really have kind of got, not that everyone is without fault at all, but there are, there are brands and places where you can see they've got it right. Obviously like Fenty and Rihanna is, is, is an obvious one to, to mention. I feel like, you know, that's, that's the go-to when you think about how to do inclusion. And she was doing something simple, as she said, she was just, she's making products that, that black women, that everyone could, could, could kind of use. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm rambling. No, you, 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 you literally like answered so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to maybe springboard off, off of that with your thought? Well, I was just going to say like one, it's interesting as well seeing brands approach like inclusivity or trying to widen their audiences and they think that in and of itself is an aesthetic and what kind of like Galdem and polyester prove is that like there isn't one aesthetic of inclusivity or diversity or whatever you want to call it like there's so many different things you can do so many aesthetic approaches so it's not just about like oh we've got a diverse campaign that's the theme and that's what it is because it's like no these people like aren't just their identity markers either we need to think about like what they actually yes. care about who they mm -hmm. are like whether they are like a polyester girl or a gal dem girl or both like yeah. you know there's all of these intersections and crossovers and it's not just a blanket thing and i think that is like something really important to consider as well it is i think it's like mm -hmm. everything you're saying i think is is mirrored in the content that you're making right so if, if we look at a, a podcast like you know the obsessions format from the polyester podcast right what that that looks at um something that is nothing to do ultimately with it is informed by identity certainly but it's it's like what 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 are what are people passionate about what are they engaging with that has nothing to do with their work um yeah. that, and and it's all that kind of serendipitous strange and interesting and, and fun and irreverent um notes and yeah i think seeing people in kind of the fullness of who they are um mm -hmm. well, i guess what you're touching on um yeah i think that's the whole sorry just to add that's like quite literally the whole reason why galdam exists is because there like has not been a space for people of color for women of color and number non-binary people of color to to have the space to to write about what it is that they want to write about without being pigeonholed as only being able to write or speak on race, gender, you know, like you say, those markers, when someone looks at you and says, this is who you are, they decide who you are. It's, it's not, it's not about that. And of course, you know, especially now, a lot of the content that we look at does touch on, on really identity driven um, kind of issues and, and politics, but it's not, it's not, it's not only those things. It's not, you know, there can be duality. And I think that's, that's like a really important point that you kind of bring up, Clarissa. Thank you both. Um, so I guess what I, I kind of, next question I'd ask you is what I guess would, like in terms of if, if brands um, are looking to sort of, um, you know, work with you, collaborate with you, sponsor, your content advertise against your content i guess how can they do that and what are you kind of looking for in those kinds of um partnerships mm. i think beauty is like i don't know if you are any like if this is the same but i feel like for a lot of the audiences that we speak to beauty and um self-care in that kind of space is is so is so important and so relevant and so um necessary in terms of self-expression in a lot of ways like we know that despite the fact that the maj the majority of the beauty industry does not cater to to, to women of color we are massive consumers of products we are 
we are like we're like I think I, I think I've got some stats which is like we're like four times more likely to to to, to purchase to purchase certain things we we use these things as a way to um to to express ourselves and I think and I think especially you know for queer people as well they're just there are so many like layers to it um and so and so yeah it does it feels it feels to me like a like a really kind of natural fit we worked with Glossier like on the launch of one of our print issues a couple of years back and that was kind of the perfect partnership and like I only mentioned that they use their kind of audience as as the models and the people that you feature and and similarly with that we kind of scouted all of the models from from our readership um and and yeah I think that there are some really interesting ways that you can work like yeah I think I think I think the the possibilities are endless and the ways that we work with brands are, are a somewhat endless as well so yeah I think definitely similar and beauty is like such a big part of what polyester is like we had the beauty issue last year which was a whole beauty zine of what we think the future of beauty should look like that we put out last November we've also done like shoots that cross over with the podcast so for example in our first season we had a podcast episode about like dating as a fat femme and then we did like an affirmation self-care shoot with the people that were on the podcast so they had like affirmations written over their faces um and that was like a really great way of like pairing the visual with the audio like putting a name to those face and like just adding kind of like another level to it and I think it's like important for brands to kind of look at the content that we're both doing as platforms because like polyester for example has weekly beauty challenges we're always engaging in beauty culture in this way that is just not being echoed in the mainstream and i think there's like you know like a perceived risk from brands i don't know if i already mentioned this of like oh if you have fat women like that's not going to be aspirational for people but that's our best performing content when we do have fat and plus size women and non-binary people on there people and the same as Liv said like people who are like disabled trans non-binary fat like women of color they also especially like fat women may not be able to like buy the clothes they want I know that's like a massive thing for me personally or like use fashion in the way to express their identity that they want to so then they go to beauty and we're like seeing that so much all over Instagram like so much of my work is constantly researching Instagram for like young people that are making this content already and then being able to give them a platform to elevate that and I think that's a way beauty brands can work with platforms like ours really great in a really great way is to allow us like resources and time and commitment to be able to keep championing these things mm. Definitely. And I, I think what, part of the reason I think we actually wanted to have the conversation with you both um, is because I, I also think as as podcasts and kind of how how the brands are kind of extended into so many different you know channels, it's very different actually in, in podcasting to see that. And so I, I, I feel like I only kind of touched on this. I'd maybe like ask Liv um, her thoughts on, I guess, what do you see as being, um, you know, brands basically being able to do with, you know, the, the, the Galdem podcast output, mm. they wouldn't necessarily be able to do safe from other, other podcasts. Um, as yeah. Well. I mean, I guess that- like, I'm, yeah, I guess like one of, there are, there are, there are different ways. And, and, and I think there are also ways to, to tie in a kind of like sponsorship of the podcast with, other kind of campaigns and we're doing that at the moment or exploring that at the moment with for example uh like underwear brand um and we're looking at hosting a kind of virtual event and space we're looking at the kind of pure sponsorship and i mean you can do one or the other and and it's and it's not it's kind of we work on a case-by-case basis we think about like what is the aim of the campaign what is it that the brand wants to achieve what is what do we want to achieve how do we make this a collaborative exercise and how do we execute right and so with this one we're looking at um some specific kind of like members only content as well as as well as the the podcast because we have this really really engaged really really dedicated um base of of subscribers those are like the proper like hardcore kind of galdem fans and so for what it is that they wanted to do which was relatively intimate that that fit in that way so i think i think we can be we can be we can be as imaginative as 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 one wants and 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 needs to be um and and like you said earlier we we have reach we have social platforms we have an editorial platform like i know for you know potentially with some of the talent they'll be kind of cross um reference and posting or like another piece of content which runs on the site to accompany 
um to accompany the podcast as well we have like you know half a million hits to the site every month so there are there are like there really are different ways that that brands can tap into what we do um and i think i pride ourselves i guess on the fact that 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 you know we are really really creative and our team is incredibly creative and 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 good at coming up with creative solutions to how to kind of deliver messaging yeah. and i'm sure that you ioni and polyester are, you know yeah i think that's like exactly the same as well because what we enjoy doing is being able to like work with a brand and tailor a project around it that we know is going to like hit right with our audience and actually provide like the outcomes that everyone wants and give back to our community in that way and like similarly to uh Galden, we have like our own membership platform which is a newsletter mm -hmm. and we've been running beauty tutorials in that for like the last three or four months with like more indie beauty brands and then doing giveaways with our audience so i do think like especially with platforms like polyester and Galden, the possibilities are literally endless because we mm -hmm. cross platform on so many things yeah and the podcast is like a hub which then can be like sprung out of in so many ways if that makes sense mm -hmm. And, and pe people and you know we we will we always do and we we you know perhaps i'm our detriment but we will a lot of times kind of over deliver and, and offer a lot more from a package than you would get from um you know another another maybe like slightly bigger reach um based platform but you what you're getting is is real engagement and i think the other thing to to look at is that um you know i've seen content and and posts and you know we've experimented with cross platforming with some really really large kind of publishers and often what you see is the engagement is far greater um when you look at the galdem side of it so what is it that you want and i think mostly people want genuine engagement that that's what everyone should be aiming for right so yeah i think it makes it makes sense thank you so much for 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 everything that you've kind of said and your time and I think your perspectives it's all just so invaluable and um thank you. yeah thank you for being an incredible person to work with honestly it's yeah been like just really. such a dream all right we'll touch base all right bye thank bye you. Hi, so um, I'm sorry, I don't think my video is working, but hopefully you can hear me. Thank you so much, Clarissa, Liv and Ioni and Seema for today. Thank you, CW, for letting us host this. Thank you for watching. And in this slide, you can find mine, Clarissa's and Seema's email addresses. We're right up against time, so we don't have time for questions. I'm obviously delighted to answer any. You can get in touch with me um, on that email there um, or via the CW. Thank you again so much for your time today. Um, we look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks, everyone.